What are you doing with level 9 access anyways? Destroying the uh, galactic government. Awesome! Oh. Are you going to set all their nukes to target each other? Oh, or, or reprogram their military portals to disintegrate their entire space fleet? Good pitches, kids. I'm almost proud. But watch closely as Grandpa topples an empire by changing a 1 to a 0. <laughs> Whoa, that was freaking crazy. Could, 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 could that actually, you know, happen? Well, like most things in the social sciences, the answer is a resounding... kinda? <music> the uninitiated, that clip comes from the fantastic science fiction cartoon, Rick and Morty. Without exaggeration, it's probably the funniest animated show on TV right now, and its incisive social commentary is second only to its ability to generate memes and catchy slogans. There is a bunch of stuff that I love about this show, some of which is going to end up in a video someday, or, you know, already has due to, you know, parallel dimensions and universes. But today, we're going to be talking about Rick's scheme to take down the government by zeroing out the dollar, and whether or not that's actually possible. Let's talk about the idea that somebody with level 7 clearance would go to some random computer terminal and set the dollar's value to some arbitrary amount. Now, many of you are probably familiar with the fact that the US dollar isn't based on precious metals. In fact, it hasn't been since the 1970s, but is instead what we call fiat currency. Latin for the phrase, let it be done, it basically means that nothing is inherently valuable about the currency itself, except that it comes with the promise and force of the United States government. We use it because they say so. But fiat simply means that the government has declared the currency to be used. Just because they have control over what form the money takes doesn't necessarily mean that they have the ability to determine its actual worth. And there's no way that the government could be able to do that. Not without having control over the exchange rate of every possible combination of goods, the local scarcity of all resources, and the willingness of the citizens to haggle and deal for things that they want. This is totally impossible, by the way, and consequentially, so too is the idea that there's some computer out there capable of controlling the value of currency. A really important thing to realize is that since there's nothing concrete backing them up, it doesn't make much sense to describe the dollar's worth as being objective. Like, one dollar isn't just worth two, right? It has to be worth two in comparison to maybe a past version of that dollar, or maybe a different currency entirely. It's the same logic with the dollar being worth zero. It can't be worth nothing compared to itself. It has to be worth nothing compared to something else. It's all relational. This makes the dollar just like any other economic commodity. Well, I mean, except for the fact that it's backed by the power of the global hegemon, but its worth is still based upon its ability to be exchanged for other things of value in the market. And because of this, it is still inexorably linked to the twin masters of economics. Supply and demand. Because the dollar grants access to the products of the world's largest economy, there's a pretty high demand for it, both within and outside the United States. But because its value is relational, that means that its strength is going to be dependent upon the United States' economic strength, as well as the strength of its competitors. So as the United States starts to do better economically, the demand goes up, and so too does the value of the dollar. Similarly, the supply of the dollar also impacts its worth. Even if something is in really high demand, having an overabundance of it is going to reduce the amount of power it has per unit. Like, imagine if the world really had just one bottle of water, I imagine it would fetch a pretty hefty price if the world doesn't, you know, devolve into a Mad Max scenario immediately. But if there were one trillion bottles of water, then it would command a much lower price. Dollars the same way in that modulating the number available is going to impact its value. If you were to decrease the number of dollars left in the world, then its worth would go up. But if you were to increase the number of dollars circulating around the world, then its worth would go down. And this is just one planet. Remember, Rick managed to tank the entire Galactic Federation's currency. You know, a system comprised of thousands of planets. Because of the necessary complexity that comes with so many individual actors, it makes it kind of dubious that there's just one computer out there where one could just click a button and set the whole thing worth to zero. It's not like currency values in a constant state of chaos. The US can exert some influence over the dollar by changing the amount that's readily available, as well as working on the general health of the economy. The Department of the Treasury, for instance, has the ability to print and destroy money. By doing so, it can either increase the amount of money printed, increasing the availability, and decreasing its worth, or it can burn more, decreasing the amount of money available, and then increasing its worth. And by the way, yes, you heard that correctly. They do, in fact, literally burn excess money. That's how they get rid of it. The Federal Reserve can also impact the worth of the dollar through its various monetary policies. For instance, it can either raise the interest rates that it charges banks, which will make them save more money and then, you know, take money out of circulation, or they can lower interest rates, which will make banks want to spend more money and increase the amount of money in circulation. 
They can also use other policies that would try to get the U.S.'s inflation rate to be at about 2%, which economists have argued to be the ideal rate for employment and other indices of economic well-being. This all admittedly just sounds like controlling the dollar's value, but with extra steps. The difference is that these are broad measures that would, when working optimally, change the general direction of economic trends. They're not capable of surgical changes in worth. And the extra steps means that you can't just have a rogue Rick flub it up on his way to the bathroom. He just teleported into a galactic federal prison! I'm gonna go take a shit. Now it is possible for a currency to become worthless, and there are political ramifications to this. For instance, hyperinflation rendered Nigeria's currency to be just as close to zero as you can get, and in pre-World War II Germany, it was actually really common for people to burn, you know, bricks of cash for them to stay warm. That's how worthless the money was. And these problems can happen due to poor monetary policy, but they happen gradually and, you know, in confluence with other factors. Nobody could have just pressed a button and caused a whole galaxy's political system to go to hell in a handbasket overnight. And actually, in the show, it didn't even implode overnight, it happened instantaneously. Which, actually, thinking about it, is probably against some of the laws of physics, you know, considering how fast information can travel, it can only travel as fast as the speed of light, unless I have a whole bunch of things that are just, you know, entangled on the quantum level. Regardless, the point is that the show definitely took some creative liberties. Should the dollar reach zero, it potentially spell doom for the United States' economy, and consequentially, thanks to globalization, the rest of the world's too. But since a big part of its worth is based upon the demand, if it was to actually be worth zero, that would mean that nobody wanted the US dollar anymore at all. Which would really be what would doom us here. The actual numerical value of zero would simply just be the symptom of an end that's already been happening. And that's the way the news goes. What do you guys think about the forces that make the dollar and other fiat currencies worth what they are, as well as, you know, the ability, the limited abilities that we have to be able to manipulate them? Or just, you know, about Rick and Morty. I'm, I'm just really frankly happy that the season has started anew. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. I look forward to reading all of them and answering a few of them in the next office hours. Links for everything we talked about is always be down in the doobly doo as well as the links to the Facebook, the Twitter, and the blog. I look forward to seeing you guys out there as well. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you consider giving it a thumbs up, and if you want to support the channel, you can do so by commenting down below, by sharing this video, and by subscribing to the channel to stay in the loop for more awesome social science content is uploaded. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.